Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quilter's Apothecary. Today, we are doing a tutorial on the mystical dimensional number four, which I always refer to as my square boomerang, and because it reminds me, obviously, of a square boomerang. Now, this particular uh, dimensional ruler gives an effect of different size ledges, which we're going to talk about one in particular, which is the middle one. But first, I want to take you down on the paper and show you how um, we would do all three different separate. And then we'll go over and we will do it on paper as an actual filler design. So let's head over. Here, I've already drawn out three different examples, and let me turn those towards you, as if you had been drawing them. And of course, this is the shape, and I've done all three exactly the same, except when you look at the ruler, what you notice is that you have three different dots that you can use your pencil and go right into and put your registration mark to get your um, ledge divider. And I have a short, short bottom ledge, I have a middle, and then I have a tall bottom ledge. So now, on this bottom one, what I did is when I traced that, I put a line or a dot right there in the bottom, and then very simply, I would go ahead and put a little registration mark right there so I know where to aim to when I actually put those marks in and then on this one I went ahead and I did it in the middle ledge now that's the one that I typically use the most is the middle one and then I'm going to put my little registration marks right there now the middle one is actually a inch down from the top or up from the bottom and then on this one I went up from the center and I used the higher mark. And let me go ahead and put those registration marks there. And there's lines on all three so that you can see exactly where to draw to. And then once I would have marked my design out, then I would simply go in with a straight ruler or a ditch ruler on my machine. Now this is the tall one. And I would line that up. Now when I do this, I'm actually looking at two different things. I'm looking at the dot that I created so that it would hit the dot. But also, I'm looking up here at the line that I drew compared to a line on my ruler to make sure that it's nice and straight. I'm going to go ahead, mark that, turn, line it up and take it down just a little bit so it hits the dot i'm checking to make sure that it hits the dot there i'm checking to make sure that it's level there and i go ahead and i put that in there now also i'm aiming towards those lines as well that we just put the ticks on the side now i'm going to line this up and i would go through when i have the design and i would put a dividing line so it gives it that dimension of a folded ledge. Now on this one, it would be the center. So I'm going to line that up. And on that one, it's fairly easy because it's actually a true inch. So I go up to the line, turn, line it up. And I have sticky stuff on the back of my ruler so that that way my ruler is not going to slip on me. And I am using the handy grip tape, which I absolutely love. Let me go back. Miss that little bit right there. Okay, so now I'm going to add that center divider right there. Okay, so that's the um, center divider ledge, and now we're going to go to the lower divider ledge. So I'm going to line that up, make sure that my line is straight right across there. It's a weird angle for me to be drawing, but I want to make sure that you can see it as if you were drawing it. And then I would turn it, repeat that same process, line that up. Keep it straight. 
and that's going to give me a larger ledge, but a shorter crutch of the ledge. So this is going to come up here. I'm going to line that up. And then I'm going to put my divider right there so that I get that wonderful 3D effect. So again, now we have the effect of three different size ledges. Now you can mix and match these um, and play with these obviously on paper to come up with a ton of different designs. So now I want to show you a few different examples of how I would use this in a space. So now what we have here is we have a space that's been divided in half vertically and this could have signified a border treatment or a open space in a modern quilt uh, or a block design. So this will work either way, wh however you choose to use it. Um, right now we're just going to fill up this space. And then what I have is the seam line down here at the bottom. That would be the seam or the bottom of the block or the seam between the body and border of the quilt. So now once I have those registration lines in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ruler. I'm going to line it up so the tip comes right down to the bottom seam, both of the bottom little horns. Line it up and I want to make sure that my holes here in the center line up right in the center of that registration line that I made. And I'm going to come up just a little bit to leave room for my marker or in your case on a quilt it would be whatever type of marking tool you choose to use. Okay and now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to mark. Now when you're practicing and auditioning different designs on paper to build your portfolio, the one thing that I always want to suggest to people to have in your pencil, pen, and eraser bag, and I'm going to go ahead and use the center. Let me detour a little bit back here. So I'm going to use the um, center line here. And I'm going to put just a little line there. Now I know that that's an inch, so I don't even have to do my side lines there. And then I'm going to come up and complete that all the way back up. So now let me go back and mention this. I always have a container of whiteout so that that way for my portfolios, if I mess up something that I'm drawing to put into my portfolio, I can always make a quick correction so I don't have to redraw the whole thing over again. Just a little tip to save you some time. Building a portfolio is important. Remember, as quilters, we are performers. That means we don't wait until we get a quilt to make the mistakes. We make them on paper to learn what to do as well as what not to do. So now I stacked that right on top of the previous. And I'm going to continue that all the way up. And I already put my center registration line there. I'm going to go up again. And I'm going to repeat that. Go just a little higher. Line that up. Make sure that that's centered. Mark. And there are a couple different ways to do this once you finish the first stack. Let me get my registration line back in that center. Line that up, put my little dot, line that up, come up, repeat that. Dot right in the center, come up, and I'm at the top of my border, for example, or throat space, whatever you want to call it, or at the end of my block. Okay, and then I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to put my little dot in the middle. Okay, now I have my first row completely drawn out. So now the next thing I'm going to do before I go in and put my lines as well as my little crotch line between them is I'm going to go ahead, go to the next row. I'm going to line that up so that that's following that line and so that this one is following this line because on this one 
I'm going to interlock them. Now, the other option would be to go ahead and go next to it and stack it next to it, which is going to give me these diamond shapes in the middle, which is going to also give me another option for our dimensional um, design here. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to interlock them. It's like a tessellation. Tessellation? Tessellation. I'm not sure which one that is. Got to learn my words, I guess. So I'm going to continue up. Line that up. And again, go back and put my center right here. Now, I don't need to line up the center because now I can just keep using what I already have there to continue all the way to the right and then all the way to the left. I've gone ahead, I have filled this all in, I have done my row by row so that they interlock, and then what I did was I went in and I put in my lines that would separate the ledge, and then of course the crease or the crotch in the actual ledge itself. So then they're offset, every other one, and as you can see here, on this part, I went ahead and I started putting in some designs on that bottom of the ledge portion. For example, here, what I did on this one was I simply used a ruler, straight ruler. I lined it up, and I went quarter inch out all the way. So I've got this here, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to offset these because I don't want them to be exactly the same place. And I'm going to line that up, and I'm going to go quarter inch out, line up, quarter inch out, line up, quarter inch out, 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 and then I start from the center again, and I go out the same way, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, and then what I did here on this one is I did the quarter inch from the center. Now when I did that, I did one at a time. So I did my up, stop, turn, and then I did my down. Now the thing that I did was when I did that, I didn't use the ruler exact mark to do the second line down. I always made sure that I matched up with the line that was there, just in case my mark was a little bit off when I drew my um, number four. So that is one way to do it. Now here, what we've done is I simply went in a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, and then there was another quarter inch because this makes up a whole inch, and I just did every other um, on the filler there, and I used my swirl up, backtrack around the back of the head, swirl down, backtrack around the back of the head, swirl up, backtrack around the back of the head. Now here what I did was... I simply went in a quarter of an inch from the upper edge, and then I went up a quarter of an inch from the lower edge on that, that, that bottom, the ledge itself, or the wall of the ledge. And then I just went in and I did that swirl design, which I already have a tutorial up. It's the basic swirl. I think it's the third part because it's a three-parter. And I used a sash design to fill that in. No, on this one, I actually did it a little differently. I actually flipped it. So what I did was I did my from the center out, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch on both sides. And then I started here on this side, and I went in quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. So again, there's different things you can do here to uh, decorate your ledges. Um, and again, you're going to get a completely different look when you actually use different sizes of the ledges. So if I would have used the short ledge or the short crotch part of the ledge, then that wouldn't give me have given me uh, a lot of room to do all of this this big or 
all four of those would have given me three quarters of an inch instead. Now here what you see that I did is I simply did the center out, I did my figure eight, and then I went ahead and I feathered. I did a gently curved spine and I, and I eyeballed it to match it. It's probably not perfect, but the human eye isn't going to notice that or pick that up readily. Um, and I went ahead and I feathered out both, both directions on, on there. So again, this is a wonderful effect. It gives a, a, a wonderful uh, addition to any of your 3D designs. So now let's head over to the machine and l let's use this at the machine so you see how it quilts out. Okay, so I've started marking, but let's go back to the beginning. I located the center here, and then I also have my bottom seam down below, and on my center, I went ahead, I lined it up, the first one, I traced that, and I made sure that I went right down to the bottom of the line, keeping that centered, and located the center line, which is, of course, is going to be an inch down from the top. I staggered that right up there. I made sure to keep that straight on that line. Did the third one, and now I would continue up. And I would repeat that all the way up to the top of the space that I'm actually doing. Now remember, as I'm marking this and I'm using this bow and I'm using the thin tip bow and I want to make sure to keep my pen tip, whatever you're marking with, as close to the ruler as you can get. I don't want to stray away or give myself a little bit of a margin. I want to make sure to go right up against it. So now I would take this. I would line that up so that that, just like we did on the paper, is nestled right in there because we're going to interlock these, and I would begin my second row. And I would go all the way up, and row by row, complete the whole amount of drawing that I would do before I would start quilting. So now I have the whole area drawn out, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in with the machine, and we are going to ditch the lines. Now before I go in and add any dimensional stuff to these like we did on the drawings, I'm going to first complete this whole section with the straight line ditch work. So now I'm going to slide up the line. Now I am going to deepen these lines and embolden them. One, two, three, stop. Shift my ruler. I want to come down on that face divider right there on the side of that ledge. Three, and I'm going to take that up. And now I'm going to come down the side again, just like that. One, two, three. Now I'm going to slide over and I'm going to complete this one. I'm going to go up first, down. Three and four. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come and I'm going to work my way down. One, two, three. Now remember, I also put some, some tackiness on the bottom of my ruler so that that way I'm not going to miss my line. There's not going to be any slippage. One, two, 
three, travel down the edge of my block, and then keep repeating that all the way down the space. One, two, three, stop, shift, one, two, three, go back up, shift, one, two, three. Now remember, there are going to be times when you're going to blow it accidentally and you're not going to be exactly on that line like I wasn't there. But I'm, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to just put the line where it needs to be and the eye is automatically going to self-correct when it sees that. Three and then continue all the way down. And so again, now you can see how this is going to travel. I've actually started filling in now with the, um, the three fillers, and I'm going to alternate as I work my way through here. So I might do this one, skip one, this one, skip one, this one, and then I'll do this one here. And then in this next row, which is staggered, I might pick two different designs and do the opposite there. I could choose one of these and do one of these designs in all of them. Um, so anyways, this is how the design works. So there you have it. That is our mystical dimensional number four. That is one option out of a myriad amount of designs. So we will hope to see you later. Make sure to click the subscribe and also ring the bell so that that way you get a notification when we have new videos. We will see you down the road. Take care of yourself and take care of each other and enjoy the quilting process. Mm -hmm.